EA Sports. Big. From 2000 to 2008, they were dropping classics left and right. SSX, the entire Street series, Def Jam Vendetta, and a few other racing games that I never knew existed. These arcade-style games all had one thing in common. They were fantastic. Every time you loaded one up, you were in for an exciting journey of progression and dominance, all topped off with style and creativity. Now you're probably asking, if all these games were so good, then why do they cease to exist after only eight years? Well, I don't know. So I'll be diving in headfirst to find out. Steven Rechschaffner, the founder of EA Sports Big, was a World Cup freestyle skier in the late 1970s. He witnessed the birth of snowboarding, then created an event called Border Cross, which completely inspired this first game that came out on October 26, 2000. SSX. This is where it all started. The snowboard racing game that dazzled spectators right out of the gates. It won a handful of awards including Console Sports Game of the Year, as well as Console Racing Game of the Year. That's a deadly combo. The wild thing about that is, out of the big three, it's ranked third, for the simple reason of, they just kept on improving with each game. There was already an awesome some foundation of characters and gameplay to work off of, so they wasted no time making the sequel just one year later. Welcome to SSX Tricky. SSX Tricky, based directly off of Run DMC's It's Tricky. It literally ties in with the game's feature mechanic, getting the tricky meter full, then busting out a wild, character-specific special trick that really makes you feel good inside. Speaking of character-specific, they really focused on personality as well. Hey Luther, you're so fat the back of your neck looks like a pack of hot dogs. From funny little in-game voice quips to pre-game banter, it really made your decision on who to play with have a little more weight to it. And I like that. This is a top 5 game in many people's lists. I haven't made an entire video about it, link in description. Although my favorite favorite came out in 2003, SSX3, another award-winning title, and if you happen to be an Xbox gamer, you can play this one right now for a smooth $10. This is one of my favorite games of all time. An open world, three-tiered mountain, custom stat progression, deep customization on every character, beautiful scenery that brings a tear to me eye. I could go on forever, but I already did that in my first video on this channel, link in description as well. The series then carried on with On Tour, Blur, and finally the 2012 reboot titled SSX. Not published under EA Sports Big, just EA Sports. Now these three weren't critically acclaimed, but they also weren't made by our new friend, Steven Rechschaffner. Ladies and gentlemen, this is clue number one. All right, what do we have next? Whew. In 2001, NBA Street graced our consoles with a new take on 3v3 basketball. While still having very over-the-top arcade gameplay, it was still a bit more realistic than NBA Jam, where for the first time ever, we got to see what a game breaker was. That's a five, player! Yes, I purposely bricked a full court shot with Dikembe Mutombo, so the game breaker is 100% successful. But hold that thought, because this series went god mode in 2003 with NBA Street Volume 2. It had very similar gameplay, but added the double game breaker mechanic, where it jumps to an unstoppable cutscene. <laughs> That's just music to my eyes. You were also given the opportunity to create your own character and advance through the be a legend mode, playing pickup games in tournaments, stealing players from other teams, and most importantly, building your character up from rookie to legend. You can do that in the first one as well. I just wanted to talk about it here because this is the one I played the most and was just playing. <laughs> What I found funny was, when you play through tournaments, you always end up playing like a, a street legend boss. And when I played the point guard, Biggie Little, he's a really small kid and he's supposed to be good, but I had stretch and I blocked him like 40 times. And also Whitewater is a great name for a white guy who can make jump shots. Then of course, they continued on with Street Volume 3 in 2005 and then Street Home Court in 2007. I haven't got much to say about those two because I barely played them, but after looking at the data, they seem to be the most consistently good street games out of the entire bunch. That's the butter, kid. So we can all agree that Street Volume 2 is the best, and it's also the only one that our friend Steven worked on. I think we're seeing a pattern. But here's where my favorite game comes in. NFL Street, 2004. I wasn't even a football fan at this point. The gameplay was just so good and replayable that I couldn't stop. The controls were simple. The style moves were satisfying. The game breakers were just game breaking. And don't even get me started on sound design. I told you not to bring it this way. Now look what happened! Plus, being able to create your own team and upgrade them through a series of challenges and games is a concept I wish all sports games still had today. I actually have an entire video on that. Link in the description. The fire coming! The fire coming! Yeah! Then in that same exact year, we got NFL Street 2. EA Sports Big, let me breathe a little bit. And it was hosted by Pimp My Ride's very own Exhibit. He was like, yo, I heard you like Street 1. So we took Street 1 and made all the characters look retarded. <laughs> you were able to customize the entire face in this game as opposed to just a preset, so that explains it. But a lot of the characters still look really silly. But most importantly, they added the Conquer the City game mode that plays kind of like NBA Street's Be a Legend mode. And because this was my least played street game, I took it upon myself to dive in that mode as a quarterback. And although my 
guy runs like a goblin. I plan to finish this in my free time. Compared to Street 1, there's more features including the wall juke and the double game breaker, but I still prefer the bright and simpler feel of the first game. Are we done already? Then Street 3 dropped in 2006, headlined by Chad Johnson and Clinton Portis. I hope they're ready. And it plays a lot like Street 2, except now you can run on the walls instead of just jumping off them, as well as game breakers now being tied to a single move as opposed to the entire drive. As you can see, I'm doing backflips and cartwheels and stuff. That's the game breaker. When you talk about NFL Street, nobody really mentions this one. It just feels kind of dead compared to the previous two. Good job. Go Good yeah, job, dog. Go yeah. Go. The only one I didn't play was NFL Tour in 2008, because I didn't have an Xbox 360 until 2011 when Skyrim came out. Now, what sets NFL Street apart from the rest is that Steven didn't touch any of them. They were instead handled by the nice guys down at EA Tiburon. You can even see how they made the game in Street 1 here. I like watching this. It's a good time. And lastly, we have FIFA Street, starting in 2005. I only ever played the second one just this week, and it follows the standard create a player, rise through the ranks, increase your stats, and unlock new gear game mode. The gameplay is what you'd expect, and it's pretty fun. My only complaint is the tricks can get annoying, because the computer can constantly make you fall over, and it just sucks. These all came out as the golden era of street games was beginning to die off, with FIFA Street 3 being the last EA Sports big title ever, in that dark year of 2008. And I don't know what you're asking, well where's Steven in this? Sadly he's gone. He's still alive, but he didn't work on these games. But there is one more game he's done, that will be at the end. So stay tuned. Alright, the street series is over. Nobody ever beats me. It appears I've landed in Def Jam Vendetta 2003. Here we have one of the most highly respected games that I've ever heard people talk about. The professional wrestling game that combines hip hop with pro wrestling, with the main characters being famed rappers of the 90s, 2000s era. You're about to get your ass beat. Scarface wasted no time charging me, like I was his iPhone on 1% battery. Get your ass out of here. Although not labeled street, it does kind of follow the street formula by having a game breaker rage mechanic that can end the match quickly. He's a like when you light a match and blow it out right away. This ain't no tickle fight, little man. This is also the only game with a story mode. Pick from four unique fighters and help your friend Manny get out of crippling debt with Big Daddy here. Hey y'all, y'all ready to kick this off the knob to me yard with me? What I learned from my first playthrough that you're watching right now, it's impossible to win without studying the controls a bit, but with a bit of luck and skill, I timed my blocks, put on my socks, and went down to the docks. I plan on beating this game in my free time, and I'll probably make a video about it. And by the way, Def Jam Fight for New York is simply EA Games, not EA Sports Big. Okay, that was that singular game. What is next? Other racing games, all three in 2002. It appears Big saw the success in a snowboard racing game, then tried it with snowmobiles, dirt bikes, and cars. Sledstorm is the closest to SSX because it's in the snow and features both Simon and Zoe on the roster. And also, Steven made it. The presentation and tracks feel similar, except now you have a motor vehicle so you can race uphill also in a lap format, instead of just going down a mountain, which isn't as cool as going down a mountain. But it felt good. If I got this back in the day, you'd bet your sweet little <laughs> I'd play it. It's high octane, it's smooth, it's crazy. Crashing made me a bit angry, but not as angry as when I played this next game. Flex is my name and riding's my game. Freak style. I don't know exactly how I feel about this one. Nothing against dirt bikes, I think it's a cool concept. It's just the characters are a little underwhelming and the gameplay is annoying. Was it a glaring skill issue on my part? Or is it the fact that there's only four usable buttons and none of them are jump? So if you're used to every other racing game that has jumps, you'll miss every gap. Unless you have boost that you can only get from landing tricks. And you land tricks by going off jumps. You see what I'm getting at here? I did eventually learn that you had to lift the left stick up, like you're doing a wheelie to do a jump. But I don't care, this should be a jump button. And alas, we reach our final game, Shocks, the standard racing game with all types of cars. I found out very quickly that you really do be driving. There's intense cinematic cutscenes that trigger when you get one foot of air off a little jump. You can also gamble for cars by using the money you earn from winning races. And that's all I'll say about it, because I don't care. Because if you wanted to play a racing game back then, there were many other options. This one just got lost in the wind. Like when it's windy and you find a leaf and you throw it in the air. And you let it blow away. In conclusion, have I figured out why these games don't exist anymore? There's many possible options here. The arcade style gameplay got old, and it was just like a novel thing that could last 8 years. Are they not viable for monetization? Are they too fun? No, no, no. It's much simpler than that. In my opinion, Steven Rechtschaffner leaving in 2005 was like a slow acting poison inside the core of EA Sports Big. The new games were still good, we just weren't aware of the future damage. Also, there was a financial crisis in 2008, so that probably halted any new ideas. Plus, EA is EA, and there's a reason nobody says anything nice about them nowadays. That's what I think.
And that's the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, why don't you drop a like down below? Maybe even a comment. And better yet, check out one of these two videos I have right here. I'm sure one of them will make you smile. And hey, wait. Hey, big news. I now have a Patreon. I'm not sure what to post on there, but if you want to support this channel, it'll be for 99 cents. And I'll put your names at the end of the videos. Like, behind me. It'll be like, end credits. So yeah, just know that. <laughs> Anyways, like always, I appreciate you guys so much. And that's about it for me. And I'll see you guys in the next one.